Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this weekly Svelte, we're going to be diving into scroll position in Svelte. Really quick, before we get started here, I want you to check out leveluptutorials.com, the perfect place to not only learn Svelte, but learn everything in the web dev ecosystem. We have a new course every single month, and for the low price of $24.99 a month, you can get access to our entire catalog, which is simply massive and growing every single month. Look at all this stuff with more stuff coming very, very soon and constantly. Uh, you could scroll down here forever. In fact, um, maybe we could have some parallax scrolling to uh, show us some neat stuff here. So check out leveluptutorials.com if you're interested in learning more. Now, this is something that is exceedingly easy in Svelte. And I, I wanted to just really showcase and highlight just how simple this is. So many times when you're working with uh, you want you want to do maybe like a parallax or you want something to animate on scroll when it comes into view, you need to be constantly checking the current scroll position of your site. Now, this is the type of thing you could definitely do with vanilla JS. However, Svelte makes this so incredibly simple that I just wanted to take a quick video to highlight what you can do with scroll position in Svelte. Okay, so let's go ahead and first thing we need to do is create a variable. So we'll say let scroll equal to zero. Okay, actually, better yet, let's just have this equal to nothing, right? So let scroll, this thing exists. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a svelte colon window element. And this window element is going to bind the value of scroll y to our new scroll property like this. And this is it. Now what we end up having is a variable that updates every time you scroll and will output to the scroll y position. If you want to see this in action, what we can do is let's actually make an h1 here. I'm not used to not having Emmet. Let's go scroll. We'll just drop this scroll in here and we'll have this as an H1. Now, I have some pre CSS in here. In fact, if you want to follow along with this code, I'll have the link to the starter for this if you want to write your own of the starter and the finale of this in the description. What we can do is uncomment this out so that it makes our H1 position fixed. Now, I just made a series of boxes here, and I did this so that we could have some scroll to deal with. You can see that we're starting this being zero, so it's at least getting a value considering we left it as undefined initially. So let's go ahead and scroll down. And as you scroll, you can see we are very much just getting the scroll position in pixel values being output as we scroll. And this is it. This is dead simple. This is all we had to do to get this. And which means is that we can start using this value here if we want to do anything with it. Let's take, for example, the idea of maybe perhaps we want to do a parallax. Like a parallax scroll is something that, you know, people bring in libraries to do parallax. They they want the, you know, they want the effect of things scrolling and moving at different rates. So you bring in a whole bunch of JavaScript, but not with Svelte, because what you what you need to know about parallax is parallax is really where one thing scrolls at a different speed than something else. And that's really easy to accomplish using just CSS transform. And we're gonna do this with a, uh, believe it or not, we're gonna do this with one of the new style directives. So we can say style colon and then transform. Okay, this is a newer feature in Svelte, but one that is very nice and very much wanted. So the style transform property here is going to then get a value of some backticks. Notice I'm doing this on one of the boxes. So one of the boxes here is going to scroll at a different rate. Maybe I should change the color too, just to make it pop. So, okay. So what we want to do with this is we'll say translate 3D and translate 3D will be getting a zero for the X position. Now for the Y position, what we can do is go ahead and do some string interpolation here to grab our scroll value and have the picks here. Now the um, the code coloring in here does something funny. You'll see everything kind of goes blue after this string interpolation, but don't worry, this will work regardless, okay? So we do zero comma dollar sign bracket scroll bracket pixel comma zero. What this is doing 
is it's translating in 3D, the uh, not doing anything for the X or the Z, but we are going to be scrolling uh, or we're going to be translating in the Y dimension. Now, like I said, let's actually make this pop real quick with a style. Um, actually, let's, I think it's background, <laughs> not color. Classic mistake right there. And uh, let's call this one teal, maybe. Yeah, teal. So it just it's a little bit different. Okay, so check this out. As we scroll, what it's going to do is take this scroll value and it's going to translate it on the Y axis by that much. So not only is this thing going to scroll, but you can see it's moving. Now, you'll notice that it is kind of replicating a position fixed because this thing is always going to be translating down the same amount that we scrolled. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do this. If you wanted this thing to be out of the document flow, you could give this a position fixed. So we could say pin this, which I already have a class named pin, which is just gonna position fix this. So by position fixing this, what you're doing is moving it out of the flow of the document, you're fixing it. And now when we translate it, it's sort of adding to the, that position. So if we scroll down here, you can see this one's moving at a different speed than everything else, giving us that parallax look. So this is really neat for things that you want to pull out of the flow. But what if you wanted this thing in the flow and kind of staying in its normal position, but also doing the same thing? Well, it's actually pretty easy as well. So uh, I'm going to uncomment out or I'm going to change the position fixed for this just temporarily. And we have our scroll in here. What you could also do is literally anything with this, like math, right? We could multiply this by two. And then now suddenly this is going to scroll at twice. So if we try this now, you can see that it starts in its position in the flow of the document, but as we scroll, it's translating at a higher rate, therefore sending this thing down. And likewise, if you wanted the same kind of thing to work, in fact, let's do another one. If you wanted the same kind of thing to work in reverse red, so we'll say style background red, where's our red one at? Oh, it's it's scrolling too much. If we want to have the same thing to be in reverse, you could always multiply this by negative one. And now our red one is going to translate up and it's going to kind of move up. Actually, we might need to do negative two. There we go. So now we have multiple things. They're moving at different speeds while well, they're moving at the same speed. One's going up, one's going down, and you can see the gray ones in the background are moving at a different position entirely. This is really, really neat. Uh, in fact, uh, this is effortless parallax with Svelte. You don't need a library. You don't need any additional JavaScript. Heck, the amount of JavaScript we wrote was let's scroll Y, and then this is not even JavaScript, it's Svelte. So <laughs> incredible stuff here, and one of the reasons why I really adore using Svelte. So this is how we can get effortless parallax using scroll position in Svelte. You can do so, so much more with this. And this is really just the bare bones. And this is the basic technique here. Um, if you wanted to turn this into something a little bit more reusable, you could always say let um, speed equal to. And then instead of having a two pixels here, you could say speed like that. Now you could change the value to say, oh, actually, I want this to go much faster. So speed of four. Now it's going to go much faster. OK. And again, if you wanted to pull this out, you can position absolute position fixed. But again, that's going to kind of maybe change this math just a little bit there as well. OK, so this is effortless parallax using scroll position in Svelte. I hope you enjoyed this quick one. Again, I'll have the end result code for this in the description of the video, but this should really illustrate just how simple it is to do this type of thing in Svelte. And you can use this scroll position to do all sorts of stuff. In fact, on the Level Up tutorial site, we do things like checking the offset of one of these boxes and then have it animate in when this scroll value is of a certain position. Again, you can do this all sorts of ways. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one where maybe we elaborate on this or maybe we go and do some more React to Svelte conversions so that you can see just how simple Svelte can be. 
Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.